Um, I would like now to welcome our two uh, next contributors, Sepake Angyama, an independent curator and educator whose interest re uh, <clears throat> revolves around critical, discursive education practices and the social framework. She was the curator of public programs at uh, Turner Contemporary in Margate and at uh, the Hayward Gallery in London. She is currently the head of education of Documenta 14. As you know, this is like the largest, the most known, most important uh, uh, exhibition platform of contemporary art. Uh, also, Arnisa Zego, an art historian whose interests focus on works of art on the edge of performative. She has written the conceptual essay with a very provocative title, uh, let me say, Let's Spit on Seyman. She is currently part of the team of Documenta 14 in Athens as a coordinator of education. And we'll have a discussion together uh, on things uh, concerning art and education. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start with these um, three questions. What shifts, what drifts, and what remains, which are three questions which have created the climate for um, thinking about education in Documenta 14. In actual fact, um, the department is titled An Education, and um, I will kind of expand upon that. Um, Anissa and I are doing a sort of, I think Anissa's going, you're sort of in a more performative mode, and I'm going to do the kind of more institutional PowerPoint presentation mode. So I, I hope that, the, that this will be helpful. Um, so the program um, develops relationships between learning institutions, artist-run spaces, neighborhoods, to investigate the relationship between art, education, and what we've been sort of terming really after an interview that Adam gave, um, the aesthetics of human togetherness. Um, through the collective activation of the body. Um, as a coherent project, Learning from Athens, which is, still remains a working title, um, Documenta 14 can't be divided into exhibition, public programme and education, um, nor does it merely come to land as a kind of spaceship um, that sort of lands on, on Athens before kind of moving on to Castle. Instead, it relies on the collective action Individual, um, individual capacities, but builds friendships as it grows. And education therefore develops um, an artist-led, process-based approach through research, personal exchange, um, but also dispersing it like a breathing organism. The encounter between art, artists and the public is our po point of departure, learning from the context in which we situate ourselves. Documenta 14 is an education that circulates through bodies of collected knowledge and experience. Um, one of the discussions I think that um, has been really interesting in Documenta sort of as an institution, which I have to say is like a 60-year-old startup. And what I mean by that is that Every five years, um, Documenta seeks to kind of reinvent what an expanded exhibition might be. Um, and of course, in the context of Athens, um, it is the case that it's, it's not something that was necessarily understood here before. So understanding what is Documenta 14 is a possibility of discovering um, what it means to build an institution in process. Um, did you want to talk a little bit about that or are you staying in the performative mode? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Sipaka. So, my name is Arnisa. I start by just introducing also uh, how I am today. Actually, you will notice some of my clothing are uh, given to me by one of the artists in Documenta 14. Her name is Irene Hajduk. And the dress and the shoes that I'm wearing are part of Yugo Export, which is, and I cite her, 
You Go Export is a blind, not aligned oral corporation established by the artist in 2015. You Go Export was also a company, it was a factory in former Yugoslavia. The artist in 2015 reinitiated something again, started to produce the clothing and the shoes that were run designed in the late 60s in what was a country that no longer exists. And today I'm wearing this, and many people in Athens are as well, being part of what she's calling an army of beautiful women. Walking through the streets of Athens, hopefully around now, today walking through the streets of Thessaloniki. So what is Documenta 14? I guess a lot of walking has happened in uh, Athens, exploring the city by our colleagues that we met there, by other people, the new people that came, the artists and the local people that we met. We had in the beginning the sessions because, which were both what is Documenta 14 and also a series of walks in the city because it was one of the questions that often people asked us. So what is Documenta 14? What is the main theme of Documenta 14? And as a team members, we came from so many different backgrounds and we were so many. So it was impossible to give that as an answer. Hence, sometimes we organized these meetings with education between the team members, students and artists in which we would discuss, a bit like me and Sepak are discussing now, some of the lines or what sometimes we think it is and what people think it might be and become. Of course, in Athens, being coming in Athens for Documenta 14, it was also a new, a new frontier, thinking of it didn't really matter this historical background. It was there, but it was transforming under our feet every day. Hence also what shifts, what drifts and what remain, which I think we'll come back to. So an education, a neologism, sitting somewhere between anarchy and pedagogy, rolls off the tongue when spoken, becoming again something else. Depending on which voice or voices breathe it, how loud, how soft, how strong, and the way it is pronounced, the ears who hear it are all a part of embodying an education in the world. A trickster term. Listeners cannot know if an education is spelt with an A or a U, leaving space for misinterpretation, even misunderstanding. An education for Documenta 14 is therefore not so much attempt at a um, curriculum, but rather a cacophony, a chorus of voices, past, present and future, which not only speaks but listens, shifts, doubts, dreams and inhabits the rumoured structures of leftover paradigms, opening the windows for desires of something other, the desire to unlearn. So here we have um, some images of um, a school workshop or this is the beginning of one of the series of school workshops where we started to kind of see these threads that were emerging through the practices of the artists and knowing that we didn't have the final works of the artists as most of the works for Documenta 14 are new commissions we asked actually all of the artists to entrust us with a material that they are kind of working with in the process of developing their final project for Documenta 14. Um, and so the notion of threading and weaving, mapping, walking, um, storytelling and narrative um, is something that has um, emerged. Um, we've also been holding more recently a series of um, synodesis um, which are sort of meeting points between the curators and other um, members of um, the Athenian public, mostly, I have to say, who have a kind of synergy in their practices or a similar departure point. Um, here you can see um, Dieter Rollstrater, and um, he's obsessed with the year 1972, which is also the year that Documenta 5 took place. So we kind of um, went through a sort of, um, let's say, a sort of DJ'd conversation between Nectaris Pappas, who used to run a record store in Athens, um, and they talked about 1972 
um, through music um, as a way of kind of creating a dialogue. So it is somehow a unusual feeling uh, to be part of an institution that started so long time ago. And yet, as Sepaka says, it renews itself every five years. This documenta started in, in, the, in Germany just after the war, a moment in which resides in the memory of my grandparents personally, and somehow seems so far yet so nearby. I will read a selection from a text by a painter. Her name is Miriam Khan. And the text is called Mare Nostrum. We have a magazine, we are working on a magazine, South as a State of Mind, which was actually, we are hosted in it. It was an already existing magazine in Athens. And the magazine is currently edited by a poet, Queen Latimer, and our artistic director, Adam Zimzik. So the texts are long, I'll make a selection. Mare Nostrum by Miriam Khan. Coincidences. I would not be, I would not be, had I not, not I, I, too, but not even at all if. I would not be, only not I, too, I would not be. <coughs> I am because, I am, I too, I, because, if. I would not be if my mother had not met my father. I naturally, by the nature of things, would not be, I would not be. My mother from Paris, take flight, flee. Must my mother, refugee. My mother, daughter, sister, and her younger sister, brother from Paris to the south, must flee. My mother, put by her parents, my grandparents in panic on a child refugee transport on a child train in panic from Paris to south of France in panic at the German enemies, their own children alone on a child refugee, transport to the south to an uncle in Paris. My mother, eldest daughter alone for her sister brother, must carry my mother with her sister brothers Swiss refugee in child refugee transport. My mother, grow, born, grew up in Paris, panic at the enemies, Germans. My mother, foreigner, Swiss girl. In panic, my grandparents put their children in panic, their own foreign children, only children, on the child train to the south of France in panic. I would not be if my grandparents had not in panic sent their children in panic to the south, panic. I would not be if my mother, not being my mother, if she, daughter, sister, niece, had not been sent to the south, panic, sent, frightened, transported to an uncle, to a farmer, to southern France, I would not be. I would not be if my father, boss of the firm, not had, not had my mother employed, I would not be. I would not be if my father, boss, married, had not fallen in love with my mother, secretary. He courted her for a long time, a very long time. There was someone else. He was married, she was my mother, was not a Jewess. He was my father, a Jew, had a Jewish wife. She was my mother, a young woman, wanted to become an artist, a musician. He wanted to start a family, children, without fail. I would not be, I would not be. After the war, my grandparents back to Paris. My mother, daughter, artist in Paris. Want to be after the war, maybe artist, maybe musician in Paris. Want to be out, but my mother and my father now love, now want to have, now want to marry. I would not be if my father not divorce and not want, should marry his beloved, my father, my mother. Both now want, start, family, have children in the nature of things, naturally. I am, I too, and I also not, I because, if. Thank you. A methodology for unlearning. What can be unlearned and what knowledge can be substituted? An education in Athens and Castle is a daily practice and a public learning. 
It is an attempt to address education as an open form, referring to Oscar and Sophia Hansen. Open form is thought as a space that creates the mood for spontaneous gestures and occurrences that will awaken the de desire of existence. Following elements of open form, an education is to walk inside, walk rather than walk around, walk through the streets, through rumours, through strategies of silence, through the unpredictability of art. An education is a series of erratic paths that help question ourselves in a space in the moment of unrelenting instability in which we live. An education is a meeting point. An education invites the visiting public to engage with the contemporary artistic practices and to leave traces within the topography of Athens and Castle. An education, an education, suggesting one of many potential environments of collective study is a nourishing act, a warm gesture that reaches out to the possibility of learning otherwise. It brings forth thinking with an art to explore what it means how it feels to belong to a community, to occupy a specific kind of body, to speak a certain language and to listen, to care and to resist and to persist. And education is not based on either or dichotomies. Knowing and not knowing, sense and nonsense, meaning and meaningless, significance and insignificance, but rather on the absence of grand narratives. Here, treating both knowing and unknowing with a wink of the eye, a collective project of working and learning together can be realised through a continuous shift, a transition through space in between, a reorientation guided by shadows and echoes. What educational methodologies are being employed and challenged? An education as an entity addresses educational modes devised by the work and understanding of artists, architectural practitioners, thinkers and educators on learning as a process, engaging body and senses in active ways. An education addresses collaborative public um, and political aspects of learning in the broader context of Documenta 14 and the collaboration between Athens and Castle. This is a photograph we took with students when we were in Delphi. We have been lucky enough to be able... There is this displacement in our project we're working. There's two cities. There is this exhibition, which is an exhibition, but it's also something else. As we already moved to Athens and started. We started our public program already in October. We started our educational program. And we were lucky to have this moment in which without being on the storm of the eye, no, the eye of the storm, so to say. We could just build small relationships, focus on few things that fostered an important dialogue for us. We were in Delphi in this particular place. We had an intensive, which we called Hearing Voices, and we were with students from the Athens School of Fine Arts as well as with students from um, the art school in Kassel and artists. We read a text there, which I will read part of it now, specifically also in those locations. What shifts? Language is migrant by the wonderful Chilean poet and artist Cecilia Vicuña. Language is migrant. Words move from language to language from culture to culture, from mouth to mouth. Our bodies are migrants. Cells and bacteria are migrants too. Even galaxies migrate. What is then this talk against migrants? It can only be talk against ourselves, against life itself. 20 years ago, I opened up the word migrant seeing in it a dangerous mix of Latin and Germanic roots. I imagined migrant was probably composed of may, Latin for to change or move, or gra, heart, from the Germanic cared. This migrant became changed heart, a heart in pain, 
changing the heart of the earth. The word immigrant says, grant me life. Grant means to allow, to have, and is related to the ancient Proto-Indo-European root, de, the mother of deed and law. So too, sacerdos, performer of sacred rites. What is the rite performed by millions of people displaced and seeking safe heaven around the world? Letting us see our own indifference, our complicity in, in the ongoing wars. Is there pain powerful enough to allow us to change our hearts, to see our part in it? I wonder, said Margarita, my immigrant friend, mixing up wondering and wounding, a perfect embodiment of our true condition. Vicente Udorbo said, open your mouth to receive the host of the wounded word. The wound is an eye. Can we look into its eyes? Um, so here, actually, I, I guess many of you haven't been there yet, but Emst, which is kind of uh, unfolding, and um, will the full use of the building will be used. We're actually standing on the rooftop of the Emst here. Um, Per the architect's overall design philosophy of Emst, so the original architects, um, Takis Sinitos and Margaritis Apostolis... <coughs> oh, I knew I was going <laughs> to... Apostoliditis... Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I've been practicing. Um, we're striving to create a flexible design capable of changing and adapting to future, future uses and different circumstances. Perhaps then, when they had uh, originally designed the building to produce fixed beer, they did not know that it would become a museum for contemporary art, and that its whirring machines now became ghosts of silence, and the chorus of voices would replace them. Documenta 14, um, the chorus of Documenta 14 is a multitude of voices, bodies drawn together by listening, and... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow, that's a beautiful uh, way of saying if one minute. If you uh, pass in one minute, it's going to be more aggressive. Wow. <laughs> mm. This could be quite performative. <laughs> and instigating dialogue, debate, as well as questioning while experiencing the works of Documenta 14. Historically, the chorus in Greek tragic theatre was made up of non-professionals and citizens who operated between the audience and the actors as commentators, shapeshifters and emphasizers. While often the historical chorus would speak from a script with a collective voice, members of the chorus for Documenta 14 play a dynamic multiplicity of roles together with the visitors of the exhibition. Thinking critically and about artist projects, giving voice to to deep questions and drawing out broader perspectives relating to the socio-political and geographical context of Documenta 14. In the way visitors become contributors to the life of Documenta 14, negotiating routes, responses and works alongside one another, Documenta 14 chorus creates a chorality that continues to resonate with further questions, mythologies, dialogues, stories, debates, rumours and beyond the realm of the exhibition. All could the things ask, I'm not going to talk about. Could we ask for two more minutes? <laughs> Can, lady, could we please ask for two more minutes? <laughs> <laughs> so what shifts, what drifts, what remains? I want to close with a poem by Maria Magdalena Campos Pons, it's an artist that lives in, from Cuba. And the title, What Remains, I'm thinking, it's Nestling the All. You can play sometimes, but it should be around three mi two, three minutes. Oh, 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 the old sings the old. Who can see through the night? Who could travel in pitch black with its nocturnal lens flare? Who spoke with the stars under the piercing light on a full moon, guiding the spirit search in the return to the sugar fields? Hunting in the evening, with ancestral fire that transverses the land until dawn. 
Abuela, grandmother, is it true that when the owl is singing, we just hear the voice of a loved one long departed? Oh, 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 the owl sings, hum, I can see you now, a mysterious bird of evening, keeping vigil in the Saba tree and the ruins of the old plantation. The owl drawing silhouettes of the movement of things that only could enter those silent eyes. She was in the bedroom window, two perfect black moons. Mother, is it possible that the sorrow tune of the old song is just a prayer for the soul in transition? Or is it just a hymn to alleviate the pain? Oh, 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 the old sings, hum. I can see clear now. She who has eyes in her back, a young girl is sleeping in La Vega, a mosquito not covering her fears and exhilaration. She could see through the dark the image of a woman, oh, La Lechuza. She has eyes like black holes, witnesses of the solid darkness, of universe, the sugar prairies, and the irrevocable blue of the open sea. Could she glance the vessels from such distance? The towers, the riots, is she noticing the bodies tracing lines in the fields, the despair? Could she see the hands trying to grasp the water? the tall leaves like ocean waves. She is witness of the negotiations at place when men, women, children go to bed, standing like columns, not knowing. Will there be a place to rest, to fall? Plus, plus, plus ruins, plus drones. Drones are invading her night, plus there is no sites to go, plus ruins, plus there is not, plus, plus, plus. What is home? She is listening again to the ancient old song. Old, 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 old. Could she see here clear now, tomorrow, sighting through dark hum? Thank you.